So we've been asked by multiple people to make a video on Caribbean medical schools. Individuals asking the question, what are the pros? What are the cons? Should I apply to a Caribbean medical school? Should we take Caribbean medical schools seriously? And what kind of careers will we have? So did my research Caribbean medical schools. I'm really happy you guys asked this question because honestly, I didn't know nearly as much about them as I do now. And my viewpoint on Caribbean medical schools has kind of changed a little bit, uh, probably for the better. And I'm probably a lot more understanding of the Caribbean medical schools and the benefits that they bring now than I was about three or four weeks ago before I started reading up on them. So there are about 60 Caribbean medical schools, plus or minus a few. And in general, the actual medical curriculum is very similar to the U.S. medical curriculum. Your first two years, you'll be doing basic science courses. And your, your last two years, you'll be doing your clinical rotations. Sometimes they add an extra semester after your basic sciences. And that extra semester kind of helps you get more studying in for your step one and step two USMLE tests. The clinical rotations, some Caribbean schools will actually have you do the clinicals at their in the region at their school location and some of them will actually let you come to the United States and do your clinical rotations in the US. So that's that's something really important when you start looking at schools to, to know where they do your clinical rotations. That's actually going to be very important when you decide to apply to residency. Um, besides that, for the most part they're they're really similar to United States medical schools. You're gonna learn the same thing at, at the end of the day when you graduate you'll be a doctor from both places. So Overall, I think you're kind of getting the same thing. So, what are the cons to Caribbean Medical School? Let's start with that. Cons to Caribbean Medical School are probably the biggest one you'll hear of is matching. So, what the match system is, is a medical student, after you've gone through your three years of medical school, typically when you're starting your fourth year, you start thinking about what field do I want to go to and start getting serious about it and then you apply to the field you want to go to. I'll use myself as an, as an example. Uh, probably towards the end of my third year of medical school or early fourth year, I decided I wanted to do internal medicine. So I started looking at the different internal medicine programs across the country and started applying to the different internal medicine programs across the country. You go there, you interview with the programs that invite you for interviews, and at the end of the day, you or end of the interview season, actually, you rank the program. So you say, I like this school, number one, this school number two, this school number three. That's kind of what you do. And the schools will actually rank you also. So they'll say, okay, we're gonna rank 20 individuals this year, and I'm gonna put Dr. Dale, you know, I'm gonna put him as number 19, or you know, some, something like that. So they'll rank you, you'll rank them, and then the computer will do a match system. So that's why it's called a match. And in order to get a US residency spot, you want to match with a program, a residency program. You don't necessarily have to match. If you don't match, there's other ways to get into a residency spot, but ideally you'd like to match into a residency position. So with Caribbean medical schools, they say about 50% of individuals will match. So that would imply that about 50% don't get a match spot. And if you just hear that at first sight, you'll say that means 50% of them don't come practice uh, medicine as residents in the United States. But then when you actually talk to some of the Caribbean schools, what they will tell you is that the reason that seems like there's 50% 50, 50 of students who aren't matching is because they don't, it's because the data doesn't take into consideration that some of their students are actually getting spots outside of the match. So you don't necessarily have to go into a match to get a spot. So they will be suggesting that some of your students aren't actually getting your spots from the match. Some students are getting your position outside of the match. So they say that it's actually more than 50% of the students who get U.S. residency spots. But Still, regardless of if it's 50, 55, 60, there's still a significant portion of individuals who don't match in a U.S. residency position, and that's a tough position to be in. It's kind of difficult to finish medical school. You say, I'm a medical doctor, but then you're not practicing your residency in the United States, then you have to start becoming creative as to what you're going to do. You're going to come back to the States and do research, and then apply again the next year. You're going to stay where you are and work as a physician there in the area. You're going to go to a different country, UK or somewhere else, and try to practice. So that's probably the biggest um, challenge. Other challenge is some of the schools can be expensive, um, but really that's not too different. U.S. medical schools can also be expensive. Um, living in the Caribbean, that can actually be a challenge. It can be a great thing, but it can also be a challenge. So you know, different environments, a lot of places will be exotic. You have a lot of distractions. You'll be far away from home. So there can be really a lot of distractions by living in that general environment. So those are probably some of the major 
um, what people will consider cons to go into a career in medical school. There's always the kind of the stigma that you go around with, that you hear what people say, oh, they went to a career in medical school, they might not be as strong of a physician. But, you know, we should all understand that that's not necessarily a true statement. There's tons of individuals who go to Caribbean medical school and score very high on the U.S. and least step score. They might score 240, 250, 260, 270. And a 260 at a Caribbean medical school is a 260 at a U.S. medical school. You know, if you're smart, you're smart. That's just what it comes down to. For a lot of individuals that apply to Caribbean medical school, it's kind of a backup plan. They'll say, well, my MCAT score and my GPA score weren't weren't as good as I wanted them, and I didn't get into U.S. medical school, so let me try to get into the Caribbean. And that's fine. You know, if you do that, as long as when you get there, you work hard, you study hard, you get the scores you need there so you can um, get into the next level where you want to go. If you do decide to come back to the United States, you know, work hard while you're there so you can get back into a residency program in the United States. That's perfectly fine. I know individuals in cardiology, anesthesiology, you know, who are um, international medical grads. And the other thing that people kind of raise an eyebrow at the Caribbean medical schools is that quite a few of them are actually for-profit schools. In the United States, most medical schools are non-profit. And in general, in academia, when you hear for-profit, people kind of raise their eyebrow. And um, for one reason or another, we don't like that. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it by any means, but for one reason or another, when people hear for-profit, especially when it deals with schools, it kind of raises raise an eyebrow to it. And, um, that kind of puts a stigma with the school, which honestly I don't think is, is fair. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that, but people will look at it as a money-making scheme. They'll pretty much say, you have a lot of individuals who don't have a strong GPAs and a lot of, and they don't have a strong MCAT scores, yet these Caribbean medical schools are taking them in and charging them tuition, knowing that a good amount of them will not match a residency. So they'll think that's just a way to make money. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that statement. So I'm just, I'm just putting it out the research that I found and the opinions that I'm getting because I was asked a question, tell me about Caribbean medical school, so I'm giving it to you guys the way that I've learned it over the past few weeks. So the pros of Caribbean medical schools, number one, you're a medical school. <laughs> That's obviously uh, the most important thing. You got in, yeah, you're a medical school, do well, you're going to be a medical doctor. That's a, obviously a great pro. It's that big step of school you need to become a medical doctor to get into medical school. Uh, number two, the environment. If you're somebody who actually likes that environment, it's a great time. You get to do some great learning, be in a great environment that a lot of people would die to be in. Um, and number three, this isn't necessarily a pro of an individual going to Caribbean medical school, but a pro on a more epide epidemiological standpoint, kind of a global standpoint, that Caribbean medical schools actually provide a decent supply of the U.S. physician workforce, as does the whole international medical community. A quarter of the United States physician workforce are actually international uh, medical graduates and almost a quarter, about 24% according to one of the most recent large studies. So that's a big amount of physicians that they provide. And for Caribbean medical schools, 56% of individuals who actually practice in medicine in the United States are practicing in the primary care fields where the deficits, the need for physicians is the largest. So they provide a very significant amount of physicians to the U.S. workforce who can then go out and um, help in some of our deficit needs, which is a very, very important thing, something that I think is very often overlooked and uh, which I think is not fair that we overlook that. That's something that the U.S. is benefiting from. So overall, Caribbean medical schools, my opinion on them has honestly changed. This is just me, Dr. Dale, being real about it. I think I kind of gave them an unfair bad rap without doing my research on them and knowing a little bit more about what they were about. Um, and after kind of doing my research on Caribbean medical schools, I actually see that they have tons of great things to offer. Um, I'm still not saying that you should necessarily go to a Caribbean medical school. I'm just saying it's not something that you should necessarily rule out. I do think you should consider all your options when you're deciding if, whether or not you want to go to medical school. So let's say you do apply to Caribbean medical schools and you're going for interviews and you get admitted. What types of things do you want to be asking these schools? So you'd be asking them the same questions you ask the United States medical schools, obviously. You know, what kind of step one scores are you getting? What is your step one pass rate? It's important to know that Caribbean medical schools, the step one and step two pass rate is very is variable. So um, there was a study that kind of broke it down according to regions of the Caribbean that you were in and showed that, you know, the pass rate could be as low as 19% for a region for step one, bridging all the way up to about 84% for step one, and step two is about 20% or so to 80%. So that pass rate is very widely 
um, variable. So when you go to the school, you want to make sure you ask the school and say, what is your step one pass rate? What is your average step one score? And same thing for step two. Those are really important. You want to make sure you ask them, are your students matching? What percent of your students are actually matching getting U.S. residency positions? And what kind of fields are they going into? Are they getting the positions that they actually want to get? That's very important. You want to ask them if they um, have clinical rotations here in the United States because that's how you make connections. So if you go to Caribbean Medical School, you come to the United States. If you rotate, you do a phenomenal job. You start making connections, and that will help you with the match. So all those things are probably some of the more important things you want to ask. And then, of course, you'll ask all the same regular things, you know, research, diversity, support, things of that nature. No matter what medical school you find, you have to ask those questions every time. So that's kind of my take on Caribbean Medical School from the research I've done. Um, giving credits to Dr. Dr. Marta Van Zanten, Dr. Marta Van Zanten, a lot of the publications that she she's put out, some great studies or studies that I read, which I kind of got background information about Caribbean medical schools from. And in the description of this video right below, I actually put the link to FAMER. FAMER is a database you can go to and you can kind of search for different schools, international schools, Caribbean medical schools, and it gives you information about the schools. So I'll put that in the description below to make it easier for you guys to find some information. Um, as always, thank you for watching the videos, post comments, post questions, and let us know what other videos you want to make. We, we kind of have a running list, and we want to make sure we're answering all of you guys' questions. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on diversemedicine.org. If you see me online, make sure you chat with me. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just put the subscription button right there below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys. Bye. Thank you for watching our videos. We have two things that we want you to do. Number one, please leave a comment below or question so that we can try to make videos to address them. Or email us at info at diversemedicine.org. Number two, please subscribe to our channel. And that way we can get the videos out to as many people as possible. Thanks for watching.